Well, I thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you for the invitation. I have been asked to come and share with you the perspective of national security with regard to this conversation. And I don't come to you just as a man in uniform because all of our defenders share the same project of being great peacemakers by being so protected that we never have to have any violence as part of our future. That is first and foremost the important point to take away is that if we do this right, there's peace and prosperity for all of humanity and all of those that share this value that every human being is created with equal value and respect. And if we build on that common platform, great things can happen. But the Air Force think tank, which is what I'm here to represent, has been studying this for many years because we study competition. And this story is as old as time. And I don't just come to you as an American that understands what it means to be vulnerable, which is what you are all experiencing. You are experiencing the vulnerability of your work and your companies being dealt with by predatory competition that lies, cheats, and steals to get an advantage. And I understand that more personally than you might think because I did not grow up in America. I grew up in a small tribe in Cameroon, West Africa, up near where Boko Haram operates. And I got to live a life as a child of insecurity, where if you do not have power, you must submit to the values of others. And this story that we're talking about, historically, has happened for ever. Since the beginning of mankind, great civilizations have competed with one another, and it is an infinite competition. It will never end. And we will be competing a thousand years from now, it may be a slightly different conversation, and maybe there will be some different people in the room in a thousand years, although some of these beautiful young ladies will still be here because they will live forever. But I will tell you that what is happening here is that China is attacking us with a strategy that we do not recognize. And the strategy is much bigger than just the electronics manufacturing element of our societies. It is a strategy to undercut the industrial base and the economy of their competition and to tap into the global markets to make their profits better. Because all national security, all national security is economic. It is not about the weapons. It is about the economy. And my job is to protect the economy, the government, and the citizens in sovereign soil. And in a world where we are so interconnected, we must act together. As was already said, India and America, we are both responsible democracies. We have no territorial ambitions. We are aligned in our industrial bases to uplift the human condition. But China, across every industry, whether it is solar panels or electronics or turbines for wind power, or space, they have designed a strategy to insidiously undercut the industrial base. And they are stealing away the power of our civilizations. Now, in every great competition like this, there is a role that the government must play. Because private entrepreneur capitalism cannot solve some of these problems when you have a communist government that controls all of their companies and can funnel money and strategy and vision. They can beat any one small company. And this is what has happened in America in the past. There's historical examples for this. This is not the only time in our history that we have been able to do something to solve the problem we're facing today. Teddy Roosevelt did this when he moved from a wooden ship navy with sails to an iron navy with steam and coal. FDR, our great president during World War II, did this, building the aerospace industry. We have a strong navy because we have a strong industrial base of the merchant marine and the shipbuilding industry. We have a strong air force because we have a strong industrial base of an aerospace industry. And in the digital age we're moving into, in this 21st century, where information and energy are the 
golden pots of economic growth and development. We must have a government that is willing to help us in all of these ways to defend the companies that make the free market entrepreneurial spirit of innovation and invention the dominant economic journey to bless our families and our civilizations with meaningful work, protecting that work from predators that will steal, lie, and cheat to get an advantage, and to help us build a, a global economy where we all can tap into the blessings because we have security. And that is my message to you, and I'm here to help by building power that defends these values, that every human being is created equal, with equal value and respect and dignity, and that we must partner as nations that share these values, or China, with 1.4 billion people, may have a competitive advantage. Thank you, sir.